hello everybody welcome to the stream i apologize if uh <laughs> some of the information down below may have changed um i was running a little late today a little under the weather um i haven't hardly slept but we're doing all right today so we have two legs today we're gonna be flying from here aberdeen to uh newcastle and then we're gonna fly from newcastle to belfast um, one of the major airports in ireland we have not yet flown to but we will be flying there today um <clears throat> I don't yet have my checklist up yet, so give me just one second to yoink that. Uh, there's our checklist. I am using my tablet today to view chat at least for a while. Okay, now. So this is the Aberdeen Airport. Not terribly large. And it is currently more night than I expected it to be. Um, I did not expect to have quite this little light. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more because you can see the dawn's coming. So let's get this bad boy started, shall we? Um, so once we reach cruise, I am going to be making some announcements. One announcement. But before we can do that, we got to get in the air. So... We got to get our batteries one and two on. Ground control recorder is on. External power on. Fuel pumps all off. And then we're going to load our. All right, so let's pull up our loading for today. Looks like we need 5667. We'll just go with 5,700. And what is our passenger load? It looks like we're going to have 128 passengers. Bam. All right. And zero cargo. We need a uh, zero fuel weight of 55.6. We are bang on by these load settings. Perfect. All right, uh, so that's battery one and two, recorder ground control, uh, external power's on, fuel pumps are all off, fuel is loaded, APU fire test. That's a positive test if I've ever heard one. APU master can come on. And then once the uh, lap open message displays, we can hit the APU. Oh, damn it. God driving me nuts lap open APU start <sighs> okay we're gonna make sure that door is shut and locked If you started, lights and McDo's are lit. Lap lever should be total zero. Uh, speed brake slats attracted. Probe window heat is not needed. APU bleed can come on as soon as it's available, which it's not. I'm going to go ahead and start aligning our deers. On bat should extinguish now. Perfect. All right, uh, APU bleed is now available. Air conditioning panel, no white. Uh, cross bleed should be set to auto. Air conditioner temperature is as required. Generator one and two fault light should be on. External power can come off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all lights off. And that's our checklist complete. Uh, Adir's should be all aligning and battery off. Uh, we can turn on our strobe lights, wing lights, nav and logo is going to go to system two today. Uh, I'm not going to turn on those yet. 
seat belts, no smoking to auto, and emergency exit lights are armed. Landing elevation should be set to auto. Pack flow should be set to normal for this number of passengers. Fuel pumps can all come on. Engine one and two fire tests. Positive test for engine one. Positive test engine two. Radios three, two, and one. All online. And now we get to configure our MIG. Here we are. Okay. So this one's going to go to data, GPS monitor. This one's going to go to init. And we are flying from EGPD to EGNT. Flight number. What do we do? 21. 30. And our GPS position is 5712.2. And longitude is 212.3. Line IRS. Okay, cost index is going to be 47. That's actually really high compared to what we usually get. And our flight level today is going to be 230. Grab our climb winds. And then we'll go to our flight plan. Flight plan is going to be departing EGPD via runway 16 to ADN. No transition. And from ADN, we're going to jump on Papa 18. To Nata. And then we're going to arrive at EGT runway ILS 25. No star. No vibe. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? LS25, no star, no vibe, no trail. Let's try deleting the discount and then look at our plan. Elmud, Natav, okay, that'll be perfect. Straight in on a, it looks like a 10 mile final. Perfect. That looks perfect. All right, put it in and then Init B. We're going to need our Tolis plugin again. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know how this works by now. We are going to take a flaps one departure. And it looks like zero fuel weight is going to be 25.6 zero fuel. Uh, center of gravity is going to be 29. Block fuel is 5.7. Okay, performance. V1 is going to be 128. V rotate is going to be 135. And V2 is going to be 138. Flaps is going to be 1 slash up 0.1. Flex temp today is going to be 65 degrees. T. Perfect. All right. Set this to our 
light plan. And then we're going to set our altimeter. Look at our weather here is 1029. There we go. By the way, if you guys hear some weird noises, that is probably because the wind is really strong here today. Alright, IRS Align is in four minutes. Altimeter is set. FCU flight directors are both on. Uh, speed is dashed. Heading is not dashed yet, but it will be. Altitude should be set to 230 because we're not gonna worry about an actual departure today. Uh, Anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder, we're gonna set to something stupid. And we're gonna turn it on, but in standby mode. Beacon can come on. Alright, so where are we going to push back? I just want to look at the map here real quick. Um, okay, so we're departing 1-6, which is up here. It is really hard to tell where my taxiways are, so I'm not going to use this map. I'm going to jump over into uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. And I'm going to look real quick here. Okay, so I actually need to go straight. Um, yeah, I need to go straight. So I need to pull straight through. I do not need a pushback today. So we're going to go ahead and beacon on, which it was, but it shouldn't have been. Okay, I'm fine with this. Uh, okay, so we've got two minutes on alignment. Uh, crew supply can come on. Doors and oxygen all looks good. Gross weight is not set. Why is gross weight not set? It should be. Takeoff weight should be 61.1. Okay, well I'm not gonna worry about that too much. All right, IRS can be aligned in one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and start our engines. Engine mode is gonna go to start. Start engine two, and I'm going to run my timer. We're gonna wait for 20% N2, uh, N1 rotation, or close enough. make sure real quick that I'm on the right screen. Okay, it looks like I am. Uh, and then I'm also going to... Oh, hey, there's a limited time event in Stream Raiders. I'm going to go ahead and get us started in that event, and we'll see who we can attract. is started and speaking of started so is engine two let's go ahead and start engine one I'm gonna wait for that to hit n1 rotation of about 19 as well
The gas is still on standby, that's fine. Our ignition mode is on, that's good. Park brake should be still on. AP bleed should still be on. Seat belts are on. No smoking should always be on. Unless we are literally shutting down the airplane. All right, and available, and that is a positive start. Engine one. Let's go ahead and go back to normal engine mode. Turn off APU bleed. Brown spoilers can be armed. Flaps can be set for takeoff. That's. Why did you snap me back? Um, pitch trim is going to be up one. We need to go to flight controls. One up. Perfect. Uh, no anti-ice is needed. APU master can come off. And we are ready for taxi. Nose wheel light is going to go to taxi. Park brake can come off. And elapsed time can run. Full left. Full right. Full up. Pull down. All right, let's advance the throttle to break away. FMA should be at nav and climb. Auto brake set max. Come on. What's what's the problem here? Park brake is off. One, let's break free. Ah, there we go. Something was definitely caught up. Take Mike. This is a very, very difficult taxi chart. <laughs> I just I just want to be totally upfront about this. This is a very complicated taxi chart, folks. Okay, and as we run this taxi, I'm going to real quick run our briefing, if I can get it to load. opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. 
Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now, just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll on. Now you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Or there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the crap out of me but it's not dangerous. I've practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're gonna be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when I get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spill-proof coffee in teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal and then leave the tray on your table making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. 
right. Welcome back, everybody. We are in the air. We are flying. We are on our climb. We have a little bit of a short climb today because we're only going to be climbing to uh, 23,000 feet. <clears throat> we're normally up around 380. So we're about 15,000 feet lower than usual. But part of that is because of how short we're flying. We're only doing uh, two 50-minute flights today, uh, which when you partner that with the 30 minutes that it took me to start up, and the 30 minutes it'll take me to start up the second time, probably means that we'll be somewhere in the ballpark of 7.30, 8 o'clock before we get out of here. Pardon me. Probably somewhere around 8 o'clock. That would be my guess. It is is 8, 8.15. <clears throat> Basically, solo this first fight in uh, the Stream Raiders. I'll switch over to this to where I can actually see what's going on with you guys. Uh, we're uh, a little hot. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our landing lights. That's my fault. I got caught up in switching stream stuff. It seems so strange that we had to turn around and go back to ADN. Now we're going to turn around and go basically the same, the basically runway, runway that thing. Probably I could have skipped the Aberdeen waypoint, but I didn't, and that's okay. So let's take a look a little bit wider out. We want to have something important on our radar, so we've got Ratboom on our radar. And there's our top climb, so that's where we'll start making announcements. Um, I made, I, I think I've made possibly a rash decision, but it's it's something that we're going to try out for a little bit and see what happens. But I don't, I don't want to talk about it too soon. I don't, I don't want to, I shouldn't. I mean, I do want to, but I shouldn't. Um, real quick. What I'm going to do while we're while we're sitting here and descending, guys, this is something that I'm going to do from time to time just to you know handle my business as a streamer. But um, mostly this is just to make sure that people coming in don't see ads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a manual ad, and unfortunately, yes, that means that most people will not be able to see the stream for about 30 to 30 seconds to a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, however, you're not really going to miss anything, and if you want to see the whole thing, you'll be able you'll be able to see whatever it was that you missed, which was fucking nothing. You'll be able to see it when I release the stream video um, on YouTube. You will probably see that um, not this Thursday, not tomorrow, but next Thursday. You'll see the first half of this particular. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, no. Not next Thursday, but the Thursday after you'll see this one. So I'm going to run like uh, one minute of ads. And then I'll be right back. You won't miss a thing at times. So again, you're not missing anything right now. Those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate all the love and affection. You guys show. You guys give me the strength to do it. Thank you so much. Uh, to those of you who aren't, who watched the, uh, the, the, the ads and are now seeing this in the VOD, thank you again so much, not just for watching through the ads, but also for coming to YouTube and just watching the channel on YouTube. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're, we're aiming to get the YouTube channel up to the point where we can just have a rack attack in the name of the YouTube channel. Um, 
me flip over here so I can kind of watch and see when the when the ad is over. I don't want to say anything and make people miss something. I did make promises. Uh, and this is not telling me. Alright, fair enough. Um, I'm probably going to wait another 30 seconds or so just to make sure. Because I want to make sure I'm not making anybody miss anything. That's my word. That's my bond. I'm going to make sure that that is it actually happens. We are switching to cruise mode, which means that we've reached our 230. Suppose they did miss something, and I feel bad about that, but not much I can do about it. Please. All right, so everybody should be back now. I want to make sure that we're all good, everybody's back. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for suffering through the ads to make sure that new folks who want to walk, who want to step in and flip channels, they're not subjected to the ads. At least that's the hope. Uh, and also so that you guys don't get random ads at times that I can't control. So, we are at cruise. That's one thing you did miss. I'm sorry. It's not that big a deal. I didn't do anything. It's just this switch to alt cruise mode. We're at 230. Uh, we're just flying, ladies and gentlemen. We're just flying. All right, so here's the decision that I've made. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that uh, would do reflections like that. Um, so anyway, announcements. I have made a difficult decision. Uh, it's not something that I want to do. It's something that I need to do. Um, so... At least for now, I'm going to try this out for a little while. Um, right now, the grind of the streaming is very difficult for me to handle on a scheduling and an emotional level. Uh, the consistency of it is wearing me down. Um, the, the consistently getting ahead of myself in one series while I'm getting behind in another and dealing with one series that I love which is the flights and one that is currently irritating the ever loving piss out of me which is Magnan X6 um, it's all grinding very hard um, and it makes it difficult to keep getting up keep doing all this work, setting up the studio, uh, getting all of my, all, all of my programs, all of my tools together. Um, it's very difficult to convince myself to get all this stuff done, get it all ready for you guys, and get it rolling, right? When there's no, there, there, there's not a whole lot of payoff, right? Um, it feels like I'm following a schedule to play things that I enjoy and there's not a lot of feedback there's not a lot of result in people enjoying it so it's just me playing a game on a schedule and as a person I generally don't like schedules I like to do things when I'm doing things for myself when I'm doing things for you for, I prefer to do them more unstructured um, and right now, all of my playing of these games is very, very structured. So, I can't just pop on and enjoy something. I have to wait until it's time for me to stream that. And I have to do what I've planned for that stream, because that's what you guys expect. Right? And... I have to compromise with that to some degree, right? I have to do some of this. I have to do it on a schedule because that's how you guys know to come here, you know I'll be here, and you know that I'm going to do my best to entertain you, and if I can't 
I will do my best to let you know. Um, as a streamer, that's just smart. Uh, it works, and honestly, it does work for me. Um, for a lot of these things, I do do it to a large degree for me. For some of them, I don't. Um, there are some things that I do for you guys. And so one of the things that I need to do as a streamer is to step back a little bit. Not going to completely step back, okay? I'm not stopping streaming. I'm definitely still going to be here. I'm going to go to a two structured days a week instead of three. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to eliminate the Wednesday so that the today. This is going to be my last scheduled Wednesday stream. Um, I will use Wednesdays as either a backup day to run a missed stream or a day where if I just want to stream or maybe I want to stream later or on another day, I will do that. Uh, it's not that I'm wanting to do less hours streaming. I just want a little less structure in it. I want to be able to play with the stream, right? I want you guys to see me having fun and just doing something that I love, right? I want you to see me doing something that I want to do just when I want to do it and just popping on, having fun, and just not planning everything and, and not putting everything together like that. Um, but I tried to break down the hours and essentially for any hour that I spend streaming, I spend about four hours doing setup, takedown of the studio, um, doing editing and post-production for YouTube, making graphic assets. Um, and this isn't counting the things I do from time to time, like the animations that you see on the overlay, right? That's something totally different. Um, and I can't really include that. I can't bake that in. Um, we are already, are we already past our top of the slide. D cell, yep, we are. Um, let's go down 3,000. Okay, um, we are 6,000 feet vertical deviation. We should be fine though, it, it's giving us an intercept. Um, we probably need to put in our approach. Let's open up our ISCS. That'll tell us ENGT is 1013. Temp is 15. Winds are going to be 359 at zero knots. And then we're going to do 200 feet of the A. We should be fine descending like this. Um, the procedure's landing elevation is set to auto. Uh, make do arrivals is completed. Performance approach is completed. Don't think it's going to let us grab winds. Um, altitude is set, speed brake half as required, it may be required, but I don't think so. Go ahead and set constraints on. Woo! We go down to 2,000. Alright. Um, altimeter will be set later. Set that when I am crossing. Right here, uh, six thousand feet. Six that well, it wants me to pull this anyway. So ten thirteen. So essentially, that's that's the news. Is I am going to be. Um, not fully doing away with, but I am not going to have structured, planned Wednesday streams. Um, 
this will be the last time that I do that. Uh, that's, it's just something that I have to do for my own well -being. And I apologize for that, but, um, you know, I have to do what I have to do. And that's, that's my phone and everything going off when they should be silent. So, everything should be fine. Um, I'm still going to be coming in, especially if I start getting behind in my backlog of a certain uh, stream type. You'll see me more often doing Wednesday streams, or maybe even a Thursday stream from time to time. Um, maybe some later streams, maybe some earlier streams. I don't know. Uh, and that's the beauty of it, right? I don't know when I'll be on. Sometimes I may be on when you don't expect. I may be on sometimes it works better for you or worse I don't know but I'm going to try and experiment a little bit play around have some fun and see how that works out for you guys hopefully it'll work out well um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it and that's kind of the direction I want to go is just looking for something where we're both enjoying the interaction rather than uh, something being forced and that way I can also have a little bit of extra time in my schedule um, where I'm not doing back-to-back. -back. Like right now, I still do not have my flight video for this week uploaded. It releases tonight, right? Um, it releases at midnight in like six hours. And I don't have it uploaded yet. It's all edited. It's all... It's all um, it's all done. I just have to make the uh, make the uh, thumbnail and then upload it. Set all the, the the tags and everything, the description, all that. But that's all nothing. It, it, for the most part, it's done. Um, I just have to upload it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and speed break. Altimeter is set. Uh, we're under 12,000, so I'm gonna turn landing lights on. Never did release the passengers. Uh, we're gonna arm the landing system. trying desperately to slow down <laughs> and we are going very very fast oh dear oh did it a dear oh that's not how that's supposed to look
just so that I'm not so stressed to get down and slow down. I'm going to insert a hold. We'll be fine. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and take out this spoiler and set it to arms. So we can kind of bleed off some of this energy naturally. I think that's where we're landing right there. is in managed mode, speed brake is currently armed, alright, let's go ahead and assign some, some rewards. I'm going to go ahead and come around one more time. I'm not going to try and, and make that. I'm going to wait until we are turning back in. 2,500. Nobody likes you. Actually, I do like you. No, shh. But just this time. I'm aware. Relax. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so... Speed check, flaps one. Checked flaps too. Then I'm going to wait. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm dropping too much. Flaps three. And flaps full. We're already going to be going slow. We have bled off all that energy. <laughs> and engines are coming back up. Let's go ahead and exit our hold. Put our landing gear down. Check the cabin. Turn on all our lights.
All right. Now, I'm very comfortable with this approach. Very, very comfortable with this approach. Once we're turning straight again, I'm going to turn on the approach mode. Flying into the dawn. All right. So we're just about lined up. Approach mode on. It's prepared for a category three auto land single computer, which you don't really do. about five miles out. Go ahead and turn on AP2. Ground spoilers can get armed. Our auto brake, I'm gonna set to a runway. Really should look. Rival charts. No chart. Runway two five length is seven thousand six hundred feet, so I'm gonna put auto brake medium. That bank, that bank, bank angle, bank angle. All right, we're gonna get on the uh, rudders here. So there's our runway. Let's let the uh, airplane kind of line us up a little bit and get us our descent. I think our initial approach fix wasn't quite right. It told me 2,000, but I think it probably should have been more like 2,500. That's my guess. Let's see. The plane's dialing us in. Tolus. It should start a descent. Glide slope captured. And we're on the localizer. Go ahead and set this to 5,000 feet for our missed approach. Ecam all green. Auto throttle is on. Lights are on. Landing lights are on. Pull the cursor again. 
Cam No Blue. Alright, my, my plane. Winds are 279 at one knot. feet per minute descent. Very stable. One thousand. Light slow. I'm fine. Two hundred. Light slow. Light slow. One hundred. Hundred above. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Ten. Five. Reversers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newcastle. Let's see, where are we going to park this bitch? We need to go off this way. Landing lights, ground spoilers, engine mode, flaps retracted, APU master can come on. Train on ND off. way I'll try and park right here get you guys right up next to the terminal unfortunately we're not going to have an air marshal today if you start if I cannot miss it Looks like it's a straight in. Let's check and see where we're at. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, look at that park job. All right, parking brake is on. Brake fan can come on. 
Um, okay, parking. Park brake pressure should be green, which it is. Um, got a little bit of heat here on the right-hand side. I'm not sure where all that came from, but that needs to cool off a bit. Park brakes are on. Anti-ice is off. APU bleed can come on. Engine 1 and 2 master can come off. Uh, wing lights can come off, nose light as well. Uh, beacon can come off, seat belts off, elapsed time stop. I don't know can stop. Fuel pumps can come off. Transponder to standby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take a quick, like, five-minute break. And I will be right back. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'm going to get us set us up for our next sector. Thank you so much, and I will be right back. 